What's going on everyone? My name is Chris Dudo and I am the Goalie Gear Snob and today we're going to be talking about the Brian's Iconic Pad Glove and Blocker. Let's check it out. So yes, we're going to be talking about the Brian's iconic pad glove and blocker. And before I get started, I just want to talk a little bit about the history of the line so there is no more confusion. I know a lot of people have seen the Optic and they have seen the Genetic line, and even before the Optic, they're familiar with the Sub-Zero line. I know I just mentioned four different model names in a short period of time, but essentially Brian's always has two lines of pads. They always have their more uh, stiff or, or more straighter a set of pads, which you would find in the Optic. They have a little bit more technology throughout them. Uh, not saying that these don't, but just a little bit more tech involved in that Optic line, which replaced the Sub-Zero. Now, we're looking at a new line of gear coming out. This is not a just complete continuation of the Genetic. This is an entire, dare I say, reimagining of the Genetic line. So the changes that were made from the original Genetic 5 all the way to the new iconic there's so many changes along the way in that build process that brian's basically decided that it's not a genetic anymore it's a whole new style of pet so while we're familiar with that genetic line and we're familiar with what was in that product there are a lot of changes here in this iconic line so i want to start getting into them and i just want to get that out of the way so we can all be familiar with yes this is built off of a genetic style but there's so many changes to it that it feels like a whole brand new line. So let's get into it here. Starting off with this gorgeous all white leg pad here in 33 plus one in the stiff profile. Uh, I really love this all white graphic. I think it looks absolutely clean. I'm really happy to use these. I think that they are everything I could have wanted in a pad. Um, I'm absolutely blown away by these, but I want to start getting into them here. First thing you're going to see is this wildly shaped uh, Z-shaped profile, I would say. So Brian's has their new Brycore, and essentially what they did was try to reshape the pad uh, that's more conducive for what a hybrid goalie would need. So they need that shape in their profile to be able to pull the top half of the pad in towards their leg. Um, I don't naturally have a very wide butterfly, but the way this thigh and this shape performs makes my butterfly sit very wide. So that's kind of the first thing they did here. But to create this, uh, this specific shape, yes, they've done a lot more to the core, but they've also done a lot more to the outer roll. So on the Optic 3 set, I didn't love that it was missing the outer roll. I thought it just seemed a little bit weird to me, but I really like this outer roll here. It's very rigid, it's very stiff, and it provides a lot of good stiffness and rigidity to help this pad sit flush and seal well to the ice. Um, basically, there's a stiffer kind of layer over top, the softer material underneath, and honestly, it's just a really nice touch to create some good stiffness and shape, um, and I really like how that feels. Um, just looking at the outside of the leg pad here, the Primo Zone kind of wraps around from the inside all the way to the outside. You get a hit of air mesh right here and a little bit of the graphic that Brian's has always kind of done on the outer gusset. Uh, there is no nylon on the outside. This is just white Gen Pro. And I really like that little graphic design right there. I just think it looks pretty sweet. So now that we've talked about the uh, profile, the shape and the outer roll, let's talk about the leg channel. So spinning this pad around right here, you're going to notice some slightly different strapping uh, than you would normally see on this Brian's iconic pad. Some of it was done for me because of my big meaty legs, but some of it was also done just out of my preference. So starting from bottom to top, you're gonna see skate lace toe ties. Yes, I prefer skate lace, always have, always will. Tried bungees for a little bit and then I grew up. So this is just definitely working way better for me. I uh, really like this skate lace here. Stock, you're not gonna get a boot strap, but because these are considered samples in the demo fleet from Brian's, you're gonna get a little bootstrap pocket here, but I just remove that. 
So starting with a boot, you are getting more of a Nash style boot channel right here, and it is a defined boot channel, so it's a little bit more plush. So again, if you are a hybrid goalie, or I mean, every goalie drops down the butterfly in some way, shape or form, but if you don't like to be super technique oriented, you wanna have that boot channel where the pad can feel kind of connected to your foot. And I think that Nash really helps that feel. Small thing I wanted to note here is that um, I kept having my laces try to like unknot themselves and come undone because this Nash really grips. So something I just want to be aware of that whatever setup you're going to be using on top of your skates, this is probably going to grip a little bit. So you might just have to double knot some things there. Uh, but I really liked how this felt and performed. Huge fan of that. Moving back up to the leg channel, this is slightly different from the stock strapping setup uh, it's the same width basically would have the same closure but this is an internal strap from an optic pad um, but it was just repurposed here to go on the outside edge and i use a very long calf strap here this is almost four or five inches longer than uh, the stock length but i just really prefer having something that is a lot longer that i can adjust more to be honest, I think all manufacturers should make their straps a little bit longer than normal to try to give some people more room to play. Uh, but that's just me on my soapbox there. But I really liked this adjustment right here. Again, this is a two inch longer knee strap. Uh, it does have that little hit of navy weave from the Optic 3 pads that I was using before. But this strap just attaches right over here. Um, and it's a pretty cool, simple little uh, just strap right across here. Uh, this is about an inch and a half wide. Same with this right here. They're not a full two inch, but just wanted to call that out. Uh, this is my own kind of mod that I did. So I was really worried that just by having this elastic that it would kind of pull a little bit. So I just ran a nylon strap through the inside of the knee block, connected it to a buckle, and I kind of laced it where the outer knee wing would be just to try to pull that top half in. I had a very similar strapping setup on my Warriors and my V9 Dallas set, so very, very familiar with that here. I did try this with an internal professor strap, but I just found that it was a little bit, um, it was just kind of fighting the shape of the profile with how close my leg was trying to get to the pad. Uh, so I just opted to take it off and I've had no complaints without it. Very happy with that. Um, I'm now going to pause it real quick so we can talk about the knee block. This is a whole different knee block setup from what we've seen on past Ryan's pads. So a lot of companies now are going to a more, um, I don't want to say stiffer and make it feel like it's going to hurt, but a better integrated knee block to the core um, and just a better connection point. And what Brian's decided to do is actually turn the knee lander and the knee block into one giant piece. So you now get a two piece knee block instead of a three piece knee block. And I think that is what's adding into the perfect seal and the rigidity that I'm getting out of this iconic set. So the strap does pass through the knee block. So to unvelcro it, you can see that strap right there and the knee block right there. Close it off and it passes through the entire knee block. So it tends to kind of pull this a little bit tighter to the leg than coming out of it, which is which I think is a pretty cool feature. So I'm pretty happy with how that feels. And this new knee block is super comfortable to land on. Absolutely love how this feels. And I'm very happy with that. Other thing I want to note as well is that this Nash kind of material that you're seeing on the knee block, the back of the leg, it does grip quite a bit. So even on my hockey socks over top of the knee pads, I was feeling a little bit of grip here. It wasn't hindering rotation, just a little bit more grip than I was feeling. So looking at the back of the pad and then coming across, you can see how thin this top half of the pad is right here. I think this is a great feature. It's a great hit. Uh, I really like how this seals down on the ice and how well this can integrate and you can overlap the top half of the pads. I think this is absolutely phenomenal. So kudos to Brian's for getting a great thin shape that doesn't re uh, lose any stiffness or profile or shape. I think this is badass. So good work there, fellas. Um, looking at the inside edge, you're getting their full OptiSlide material. Uh, you're getting the Primo that comes across. Um, you can hear it. Uh, at first on the optics, I wasn't a huge fan of it, but looking at this pad here, this works way better for me. Really like this slide, so I've been very happy with it. Uh, overall, you're getting a little bit of a flexier boot. Again, this is the stiffer course. You're not gonna get a full amount of settling or anything crazy like that, but you're just gonna start to get a little bit more compression. 
Um, you're going to get a little bit of a better integra uh, integration in RVH where the boot will actually compress when it kind of hits the post so you can bounce back out. It's not going to flatten so much where you're really going to feel it against the leg, but something that I just did want to call out is that you're really going to notice that I really like this boot shape and this flex. So that's a quick crash course in this iconic leg pad. So I'm going to put this down real quick and then we're going to talk about everyone's favorite piece, the blocker. Before I talk about the blocker, I did just want to mention, I apologize for forgetting it, is that there is no knee roll across the face here. So Brian's does have two lines that are both entirely flat faced, but I'd argue that you're getting a better profile and a little bit more of a flex uh, out of this pad than you were in the optic. Um, so while this looks like it's a very stiff, uh, overall weird shaped pad, I found it to be very good for more of my, um, more of my style, best way to describe it. Uh, I'm not perfect in my technique and while I strive to, I found that this was able to move with me in a lot of different facets. So I really like that, but I just want to call out the lack of knee rolls here. So while this is a little bit more of a flexible style pad, you're not going to get the knee rolls. Sorry, old school guys. I love this iconic blocker. I know in my Eclipse review, I talked about which one I might have liked more, but since filming that one and looking at this one, I really like this iconic blocker. Uh, the biggest thing for me that I've noticed is the weight reduction. Um, so this is gonna be a lot thinner, uh, a little bit lighter, which is overall just gonna make the hands feel a little bit better over that you know two hour, even hour session. You're not gonna get as much weight. Um, and I really like that it's thinner here compared to the previous uh, generation or model, if you will, of the gen of the genetic. So again, with almost a 20% weight reduction, you're really going to notice uh, a lighter feel here. Um, compared to the Iconic, you're not getting as stiff of a sidewall because it is sewn underneath. It's not one piece that wraps over that's laced. So you are getting that separate kind of sew line where it attaches. Um, it's still pretty stiff and robust, but not nearly as stiff as the Iconic would be. So looking at the back of everything right here, um, you're going to see the BOA dial, which on the stock version is going to have a top. So again, right here, BOA, you pull up and then you press down. So it clicks and then you start to ratchet it closed. However, on the a top, you can ratchet it either way. You do not pull. So if you're using the a top, do not pull, let it stay there and just twist it back and forth. You'll get that feel that you want. I really like the palm that's on this right here. Uh, the sure grip gives you enough grip. Um, and then the Nash fingers don't really weigh down too much. Um, I sweat heavily and this was working incredibly well for me. Um, it did feel wet. It felt soaked, but nothing was really dripping off. It didn't feel gross. Um, and plus for how much I was sweating with all the sweat that was collecting in it, I really noticed that 20% weight reduction and my hands were not heavy towards the end of a skill session. So I really like that here. Looking at the cuff, this is a super reduced uh, wrist cuff right here that just Velcros closed over here. Um, you do have this larger wrist cuff. Um, if it was me custom ordering this, I would just take this right off and just use this right here. I mean, I really don't see the need in that. I want like as much articulation as humanly possible. And while this articulates very well, I personally would take that off. I also wish that there was a little bit of a better adjustment system over here because I would wear this very loose and there's a few times where it actually started to come undone. Um, so I started pulling it a little bit tighter and then of course that was starting to mess with my wrist mobility. So I wish there was a little bit maybe of a lace setting here or maybe this piece was off of elastic so you could actually flex and rotate and it would kind of pull with you a little bit more. That's me just nitpicking. But this iconic blocker has great finger protection, great overall palm size. This is a senior blocker palm and I would not change anything about it. Really like the adjustable wrist strapping right here. Really a big fan of it. If I could give one, uh, one critique or one negative about this blocker, it is that, just turn this way. So I wish that this padding would stop exactly at my wrist. This is probably negligible for anyone else, but for me, it's super noticeable. I wish that this Nash material stopped at the edge of the wrist. So it was getting stuck on my chest protector. 
So something I did just want to call out that my hands are starting to feel a little bit junked up here. And I wish it was because I've gotten that removed here um, just so that I don't have to deal with this kind of being in the way. But that is a crash course in the Brian's Iconic Blocker. You've heard a little bit about it compared to the Eclipse. So now let's take a look at the glove sitting right there. Let's check it out. So I know I just mentioned that the Iconic line had so many changes done to it. That's a little bit more, uh, instead of being a genetic six with a few minor tweaks, there's a lot of overhauls done to it to make it feel like a whole new line. With that being said, this glove does feel very traditional genetic based. That is something that Brad and I did discuss about this line. The biggest change that you're going to see from the genetic five to this iconic is that this thumb is a little bit more rounded. Um, it's not as steep and you can see that I have quite a few puck marks that have hit right there. And it's something that I noticed that if I was using the old genetic, if it was a little bit steeper or coming out a little bit more that I would actually be having some pucks kind of bounce out. So I did want to give that a call out here. Stock double T, uh, a pretty standard backhand with a very open wrist cuff, which I really do like. You can see that the wrist sits almost up so you can actually articulate where you need it to. So I really like that design here. Uh, traditional Nash Palm as well. You can get a Gen Pro option on custom. You can do a lot of different graphics on custom, but I just want to call that out here. I really like this Palm. I love Nash Palms. Just a thing of mine that I've always liked. Some people have talked about that, you know, Nash actually will uh, help slow down the puck and keep it in the Palm. I've never personally experienced that, but I can see why it would work. But I just think it looks pretty cool. And you can't clean it, but it's just, I think it looks and adds a lot to the line. So stock double T, I've personally liked a single T over my tenure. Um, I don't like that there's more material than lace. I want it to be like a lacrosse head. I like seeing a lot of lace. Um, and it's a very well designed glove. The double T looks good. I know a lot of people love the thief eyes. I just prefer the snap and feel of a single, just something I've preferred, but I really like how traditional this glove feels when I'm closing it and I'm getting that good closure and seal. Um, very easy to stick handle with, very easy to grab pucks. I feel like I'm catching with my hand. I don't feel like I'm catching past my hand or above, above my hand. It very much feels like if you're used to catching pucks with your hand or catching a ball with your hand, like really just grabbing everything together, this would be that glove style for you. So something I did just want to call out there. Um, of course, internally on the backhand, you are getting the same, not strong enough for Velcro, but you're still getting your double BOA system, which again, stock will have a top. You're not always going to get the BOA dials. So you're just going to spin them tighter or looser. Of course, the BOA still have to pop up, but if you're using the A top, just twist. I really like this feel right here. Very traditional, traditional setup right here. No complaints on this glove, uh, especially when it comes to the strapping and the backhand. I uh, really like the shorter cuff. It gives you a lot of glove to catch with your hand. Overall, a very solid glove that does feel a lot lighter compared to the previous genetic. I don't feel like my hands are heavy. Uh, I really like this glove. Um, I wouldn't say that I love it more than the Eclipse just because the Eclipse glove is more that 90 degree style that I really love. But this was very easy to transition into and just grab pucks with my hand. I really like the feel of it. So now that I've talked about the glove at length, talked about the blocker, talked about the pads, let's talk about some final on ice thoughts. So let's check it out. I just want to give another huge shout out to Brad Johnson over at Brian's uh, for helping get this set over to me. I cannot thank him enough for taking this set out of the demos and sending it over to me to use and review for you guys. So again, full iconic pad glove and blocker and the Eclipse glove and blocker, which I've already reviewed, uh, which you can check down below. But what I did just want to talk about here as well is for the final on ice thoughts. So as I mentioned in the optic three, a lot of things I noticed were um, the lack of the outer roll, the overall shape, the size, the flex. It just wasn't feeling completely right on my body. Once I got the iconic set and really put them on and got that strapping really dialed in, I mean, 
I took these with me to a game where I had to be the emergency backup. While I did not dress and I did not play, I felt confident enough after the morning skate to take them with me that night. Um, and for me to only use a set two or three times and make that call, like that's, that's huge to me. Uh, for spe especially for so much gear that I've used and I have some very specific preferences. Uh, I was very happy taking the iconic pads and blocker with the Eclipse glove. So I was really comfortable in that set. So when I, when I was using this set and making a lot of saves, I was noticing that the, the glove and blocker were very traditional. I really liked the lighter blocker. I was able to redirect pucks without issue. Brian's blockers sound different than regular blockers, so it was just something I did want to call out. Uh, I really liked that blocker. The glove kind of felt like I was catching right with my hand. It was very easy to get used to, a nice seamless closure, and I really am a sucker for that Nash pocket. I think it just looked sweet. The pads, I really had no issues adjusting into them. Once I got the strapping dialed in, I was able to move around. I had a great seal in front of me. I didn't have any puck squeak underneath of me or, you know, by my toes at RVH. I had a solid seal on the post. Um, I had a great slide. My knee was perfectly on the block. I mean, I had a great time using that set of pads. If it was up to me, I would actually custom order a set in 33 straight. I think this new thigh is great and it seals very well. And there were a few times when it was a little bit cumbersome. I noticed it more when I was in the Stars skill sessions when I was trying to be super dialed in with technique and movements that I felt like the thighs were just overlapping a little bit too much in recovery and I wish it was a little bit less. Um, also, when I was really trying to squeeze tight on tips and other things, I was getting like a full three inches of overlap in front of my body. Um, I think I should have just tried something a little bit smaller. Um, I'm not sure if Brian's has that 32 plus one in the Iconic available. I don't believe so. But I really had no issues with the knee block, the sizing, didn't feel like I was coming off the top. Uh, I was a little bit fearful of not having a professor strap, uh, but my knee stayed perfectly on the block. I had no issues. So I'd probably order them in a 33 straight or maybe 33 half. Um, maybe I could just get used to the 33 one once they kind of soften up a little bit. But man, I was just really enjoying this set. Um, I'm sad to see it go. Uh, I wish I could keep them here, but alas, I do have to go back to Brian's so that they could use them uh, in their demo rotation. However, uh, I'm a huge fan of this iconic pad glove and blocker. Uh, they do a lot of different custom options with graphic swaps, uh, other tees, lacing, custom graphics, you name it. Brian's is kind of the kings of custom when it comes to that traditional cut and sew. So I definitely recommend checking them out if you want to do anything custom with them. I just want to give you guys a thank you for watching and hearing me ramble on about the Brian's iconic pads, glove, and blocker. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. In the meantime, make sure you catch out my NHL warm-up series as I am the Dallas Stars emergency backup and I like to film all the away goalies for all the games I have to be at. So make sure you check that playlist of all the games I've been at so far. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Chris Dudo and I'm the Goalie Gear Snob. Thanks for watching this video. I'd really appreciate it if you liked, commented, and subscribed. And also rang that cute little Liberty Bell for some notifications about what I upload to my channel. Please check me out on some of my other social outlets. They're going to be linked down below.